Hey everyone and welcome to Dr. Apu RTN Academy channel. Today we are going to discuss seminar 3 of the University of Debrecen and this is video part 1. So in this seminar we are going to discuss the descriptive statistics and our focus will be on the measure of center, the spread, measure of the spread, the percentile and the quartile, the histogram, box and whisker plot and we'll get in touch or will solve the available examples in this seminar. In a study, we collect the data, not the information. We collect, usually you collect data and then we convert the data into information. So we collect the data from individuals, okay? And this individual could be people, animal, plant, insects, uh, whatever, okay? The, the plant or animal or whoever object of our interest we are interested in okay so and we have two types of statistics in this descriptive statistics uh, seminar we are going to discuss two types of statistics descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so in descriptive statistics we organize the data and summarize them okay organize make summarize make a conclusion of them but in the inferential statistics, we get a sample of a small group of people and we arrive to a conclusion and then we populate this conclusion over the overall population. Okay, so here, descriptive statistics, organize and just organize and summarize the data. Inferential statistics reach a decision about a large body, a large population. Okay, just by examining a small part of it, take 10 people, 15 people, 100 people, and arrive at a conclusion about 1 million or 2 million people. This is called inferential, so we can predict the behavior of the population from a small sample. This is called inferential statistics. Get a small sample, arrive to a conclusion, and generalize this conclusion over the big population. So... I have here also the definition of the variable. Variable is the characteristic. Something which is characteristic like the height, the weight, the mass, the eye color, the hair color. Something characteristics of the individual, okay? Characteristic among the individual in the population is called variable. And these variables are two types, quantitative and categorical or qualitative. So quantitative, let's talk about quantity, like from the word quantity, quantitative, and the categorical called also sometimes qualitative, not quantity, quality, okay, qualitative, qualitative, okay, or categorical, but here it's famous was categorical, and we have quantitative, quantitative, the one which we have reading for each individual, so for each person, we have his height, we have his eye color, categorical, we just have category, for the category, for example, the people from Asia, I have one million people, the people from Europe, I have 3 million people in one country, for example, okay? So the, the blood group A, I have 30 people. Blood group B, I have 50 people. Blood group A, O, I have 70 people. So I just put them into categories. So quantitative, something that can be counted or measured for each individual. And then we can add them, we can multiply them, we can do some mathematical operations on them, okay? Each individual, and then add them, subtract them, average them across individuals in the population. So each individual will have one reading, but categorical, I have to put each individual in one of the categories. So I have limited number of categories, three categories, four categories, for, for example, the blood groups, I have only four. So all the people in our section or our class or in our university, I can classify them under one of these four categories. So I have four categories only, and here I write the frequency, how many people under each category. Blood group A, for example, blood group B, blood group O, blood group AB. So I can put the number of students under each category, okay? So I don't have for each individual measurements. 15, 13, 18, like the height, 157 centimeters, 185, 183, no, for I have, for each individual, I have to put him under one category, I have to count him under one category. So, categorical something falls under one of several categories, which can be counted, okay, is count or proportion of individual in each category. This is called categorical, okay. The distribution Distribution of data of or variable 
tells us what are the values this variable is taking. What is the maximum value it can take? What is the money or the minimum value? How often it happens? 50% of the people in this cluster or 100% or 75 or 65 all of them are around the mean or the average or they are very far scattered okay their trend is going up or rising up or trends going down inclining down so it gives us information so the distribution of a variable tells us what the values of the variable the maximum minimum the, the most of the data for the population for the sample okay what are the value the, 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 the variables the values which the variable takes and how often it takes 50% of them or 30% or 5% or, or whatever, okay? It takes these values. Here, talking about the center, how to measure the center. Center here means the mean. Center means the mean. Mean and the arithmetic average, okay? The arithmetic average. So just we are adding up all the data, add all the values, and then divide it by the number of the values. So I have number one, three, seven, five, 13 and so on just i'm adding them up this plus this plus this plus this so get the sum of them divided one two three four five the count there are five so divided by five so just sum all the values of x sum of x i okay in x x1 plus x2 plus x3 and so on divided the number of them divided in okay add all the value the advantage here of having the mean so the mean has some advantages and some disadvantages. The advantages of the mean that it is algebraically defined, so mathematically meaning, meaningable, okay? Manageable, sorry. So, so mathematically manageable. Just add them, divide the number of them. So we can, it's easy to do it, okay? Mathematically, it is manageable. The second advantage that there is only one mean, one average, one uh, arithmetical average for each set, okay? So it's not two or three, it is only one. So the third advantage is that in the mean average, we use all the data, add them up, okay? Use all the data values, and therefore there is no missing information. The third thing here that it helps us to know the sample distribution. If they are far away from the mean, okay? The sample, or the, for example, this is the mean, the data are here. So they are scattered far from the mean or they are around the mean. So it helps us to understand the distribution of the sampling. But also it has two disadvantages. That if I have out here, for example, I have reading one, three, five, seven, and I have one of the reading 132. Okay, then I continue for nine and so on so this is outlier data which is anomalous outlier wrong reading or something which is odd this reading if we add them up it will distort it will not make it uh, a good one or a reliable uh, mean okay it distort distortion means uh, something wrong happened with it okay distort the out by out layer so all the out layers here will distort the mean okay and instead of having the mean here the mean will come up above it or blue it or whatever okay so the advantage is distorted by out layers it is also distorted by skewed data skewed data means if i have all the data here concentrated here in this area then i have some small data here so it's called tail okay tail means skewed okay skewed to the right so the tail is to the right so this is called the skewed data this is scattered data here also it distorts the the mean it gives us some error in the mean. It will make the mean it's not it's not accurate or doesn't have the, the full efficient meaning of it. Okay. The second thing is the median. Median just we arrange the data, we put them in order. I have one, three, two, seven, four, five. So just I'm arranging them, put them in order. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay, arrange them. And then the median will be the middle one. Okay, so I have the number of the count of, of number of individuals before it equals the number after it. So if I have, for example, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have seven. So the median will be after putting them in order, the median will be seven. I cannot divide seven by two and get a whole number. I have a good fraction. So what I shall do, I shall add one. So seven plus one divided two equals four. It will equal eight. 
so it will be the fourth term so first term second term first term second term third term fourth term so this is the the median okay this is the median the fourth term so what if what if i have even number so if i have odd number if i have odd number seven numbers i just add one seven plus one equals eight divided two equal four so the fourth term will be the median if they are even number for example eight or six in this example they are six okay one two three four five six so they are six if i divide six by two equals three so the median will be two terms because if i have odd number when i had the eight before so sorry not this one down one when i had the eight before this is the fourth term so how many items before the median one two three and how many after one two three so the count or the number of individuals after it equals the number of individuals before it here i have three items before the median and i have here three items after the median so here if i have if i have odd number i choose this one i have two after it and the three before it it is not right so i should have two items they should be the mean and i take their average okay so if i select these two so i have two numbers before them and two numbers before them so the average here will be three plus four divided two the average of these two numbers so if they are even the average will be the the, the median will be the average of the middle two numbers okay so how i can get the middle two middle two number my sample consists of six items so six divided two equals three so it will be three and the next one the item number three and the item number four so one two three and four okay if they are eight i'll say eight divided two equals four so my median will be item number four and item number five five the next one okay item number four and item number five if they are ten it will be 10 divided 2 equals 5. So my median will be 5 and 6. Term number 5 and term number 6. And so on. When it is mid, uh, when it is even number, I have to take the average of the two middle. The average of the two middle values. Okay. The example which they have given here. This sample. It is not arranged. First thing, I have to put them in order. Arrange them. 2, 4, 5. So how many number? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So they are odd number. Okay. So 5 divided 2 equals 3 right wrong 5 divided 2 plus 1 is 5 plus 1 divided 2 because for 5 i cannot have so because they are odd numbers so i cannot say 5 divided 2 i get fraction so i have to say 5 plus 1 i have to add 1 before dividing divided two so i get the whole number or integral three so this will be the term number three so first term second term third term so this is the third term my median will be five okay so in case of they are every number one two three four five six so i have to put them in order first okay then six divided two equals i didn't add anything i add after the dividing two six divided two equals three so item number three and item number four these two will be the median so one two three this is the one and the next one four so these are the two so it will be two plus five divided two okay equals three point five one good information that the mean and the median both of them only in one case they can be the same the mean and the median mean which is summing all the numbers adding all these numbers together adding all, all these numbers together dividing them by their count here one two three four five six dividing by six so it will be this is the mean this plus this plus this plus this plus this divided six okay in this case this was this plus this plus this divided five their count okay this is the mean and the median as we said will arrange them and they will take the middle one so the count of the number before it equals the count so the mean and the the median could be the same only in one case if we have symmetrical distribution so like this we have symmetrical distribution okay so it's like a mirror the left side equals to the or symmetry to symmetrical to the right side so in this case we'll have the median and the mean will be the same it could be a question serious question what is the case when we have the median and the mean are the same if we have symmetrical distribution okay so what is the advantage and disadvantage of the median? 
the advantage of the median that it's also it is only one okay it's clearly one the second thing it is not distorted by the out layer because here just to arrange the data and to pick up the number in the middle if it is five for example let us take this odd number so just we are picking the middle one and the count after it one two and before it two regardless this could be one million not eight one million so it will be an out layer okay or it could be hundred thousand instead of eight hundred thousand so it would be out layer but here it doesn't distort it so our our median will remain the same so the but in the case of the the mean if you remember in the previous slide will, because we are adding up this plus this plus this plus this divided the number so this out layer will impact the mean but for the case of the for the case of the median it doesn't impact it five will remain the same it depends on the count of the number before and the count not the value of the number the count only i have two number before and the two number after so it is not distorted by out layer the odd numbers okay and also it is not distorted by skewed number always you find the out layer and the skewed coming together okay if something applicable to this it will be applicable to this a skewed number as we said that okay we have most of the data are concentrating here but we have some few data are here so this is called skewed data which is remotely far away and it is very small uh, value or a very uh, small number of frequencies compared to the others okay they are called skewed mean a tail like the tail a small tail so this will not impact the uh, this will not impact the median so the median is not impacted by either out layer or by the skewed data okay the disadvantage that it is not algebraically defined so if i have number here one million instead of eight for the median it doesn't matter one million or hundred thousand doesn't matter okay so it is not algebraically defined because just we are arranging the number and picking the number in the middle there is no calculation here we did not do any calculation the second thing it ignore most of the information if this number is one million or it is eight or it is this number is five or this number is 200 or two it doesn't matter just put them in the order and pick the middle one so ignores most of the information which we have here it is complicating the sampling of the distribution okay these are the disadvantage of the median coming to the, the third one of the measure of center okay the third one here which is the mood the mode of the data this means the number which repeated the most if i have two, a number repeated two times or three times or five times and uh, it is repeated more than others so this will be our mode so in this sample i have one two 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 so three twos two repeated three times so this will be my mode because no other number repeated more than it i have four repeated two times five repeated two times so two repeated the most so it's called the mode okay so the value occurs most frequently is called the mood. The number of mood is not necessarily one. We may have two moods. For example, I have the two repeated. I have a sample of one, two, 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 three, four, 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 five, five. So if I look at this sample, I have here the two repeated three times. And the four also repeated three times so my mode here will be two and four because both of them repeated the same number of times and are the biggest okay this repeated three times the maximum okay the most number uh, occurred or repeated and the four also the most number so i will have two two modes but in the mean i have only one value in the in the average in the mean we have one value and in the median also we have one value but here in the mode we could have two or three okay so it is not necessary to be one it could be more than one if all the values are different let us erase this one if all values are different so, so uh, like sample one two three four five no number is repeated all of them are different from each other no one is similar there's no two ones no two twos all of them are different okay so one two three no one of them looks like the other so there is no repetition okay so there is no mode in this case so i may end up that i don't have any mode maybe i have one mode which in most of the cases maybe i have two three four modes five modes okay one mode 
called unimodal distribution. If I have two modes called bimodal distribution. So bimodal distribution, I have bi, two modes. If I have one mode, it will be unimodal, okay? So what is the advantage of this mode? Advantage of mode for the category, for example, for blood group A or B or O or AB, I have the mode, so this number, blood group A, when I check the students in my university, I find 130 people, blood group A, 330 blood group B, 121 blood group O, for example. So blood group B is repeated more than the most cured, okay, the frequency is high. So this is my mode. In this group, it will be easy. So it is easily determined for categorical data because this blood group is categorical data. It is not quantitative data, okay? It is not continuous. It doesn't have number for each one. Everyone will have one category, group A or group B or group C, blood group uh, O or AB or A or A or AB, okay? Head or tail, head or tail, and so on. So under each category, I have the frequency, how many times it is repeated. So it's called the categorical data. So in the categorical data, this one help, help, helps us a lot. So from here, from the repetition or the frequency, I can, I can know how many times it is repeated. So this is the frequency and this is called also the mode. It is also not distorted by our layer. So the same thing of the advantage and disadvantage, you will find all of them are repeating in everyone. Whether it is advantage or disadvantage, but they are the same characters, okay? So not a disturbed but out layer because here for the mode, whatever the mode comes, the maximum number repeated, okay? The, the number repeated the most, okay? The number repeated the most of times, okay? It will be my my mode. Regardless of whether the number here is 5,000 or 2 or 500 or 200, it doesn't matter. The disadvantage of it, the disadvantage of it, I have three disadvantages here. That the first one, it ignores most of the data. So here, I don't care about this number is 500 or 5,000 or this number is 200, 3,000, 1 million. It doesn't matter for me. So it ignores most of the information. I just get the number which occurs most frequently. Okay, the number repeated the most. That's it. So I ignore the information, the, the, the values of the information. Okay, I ignore. Also, there is no calculation done. So it is not algebraically defined. Okay, it's not algebraically defined. The, the third disadvantage, that it is unknown sampling sampling distribution so i must have one value it's called sampling distribution i can have one mean one median but for the mode i may have two modes or three modes i may not have any mode so it is unknown sampling distribution not always exists i cannot rely on it because the, the mode in some cases is doesn't exist okay not always exist or there are more than one. It could be one, could be zero, it could be more than one. For the standard deviation, I have standard deviation for the samples, okay? Be careful because I have standard deviation for sample and the standard deviation for population. Two are different, okay? Standard deviation for the sample, we are calling it S or SD. Standard deviation or S only. But for the population, we'll give the symbol sigma, okay? Or SD population, SD population. Here we'll write SD sample, okay? But you, you, usually we use sample S, okay? And for population, we use only sigma. Most of the problem what you will have here in uh, in the medical sector in bio, biostatistics, it will be using S, okay? So the difference, the main difference between uh, the standard deviation of the sample and the standard deviation of the population is the formula. Here you find in the denominator of the sample, N minus one divided by N minus one, and here divided by N. That's why always you will find the sample standard deviation is higher than the population standard deviation because the denominator here is smaller than the, this denominator. Out layer or skew, okay? So this out layer or skew, it will appear here in X, okay, X bar. It will be impacting the X bar. So the standard deviation, also, it is like the mean. It is not resistant to the skew, okay? So it will be impacted, distorted by the skew. It will be distorted by the out layer. If I have any out layer or any odd data, skew or tail or out layer, 
in odnam it would be impacted by it it will it will not be resistant okay so standard deviation same as the mean it will be impacted by the skew or the outlier the standard deviation of a sample gives us unbiased estimation so it gives us estimation which is not biased we can guarantee it is unbiased uh, estimation standard deviation for the population the whole population it is exactly same as the standard deviation for the sample but the denominator will be divided in the not in the minus one this is something called uh, the, the degree of freedom okay degree of freedom in the sample it is less than the degree of freedom in the population because population is very big so it is more accurate than the sample so here they're using n minus one but in the population they're using only n okay so n in this case is not the number in the sample the number of the element in the population here it was the number of element in the sample okay number in the sample here number in the population n okay x bar this is the mean of the population sometimes they are calling it mu instead of x bar for the case of population they are calling it mu x bar in this case they are calling it mu mu means also the mean but in the case of the population so coming to the sum to the the, the variance variance equal the standard division square so if standard division is s s equal square root of x minus x bar square divided n minus one okay this is the standard division so the variance called s square s square equals x minus x power square divided n minus one without any square root okay without a square root so if you have less square root it will give us the the it will give us the uh, standard deviation if there is no square root it will be the variance and the how to use the calculator to calculate the variance or to calculate the standard deviation this i have given separate video for how to use the calculator the benefit of this variance because it is square it doesn't have any negative item a square always will be positive so it gives us the impression how the dispersion of the uh, how this pressure relative to the uh, to the scatter of the values about the mean how the data are this this pressed about the the about the the mean it's mean so once we get the standard division we can have the standard division s we can divide it by x bar after we get the standard division get x bar this is called the coefficient of variation coefficient of variation okay so cv coefficient of standard division divided x bar the mean or the average so if i have the standard division okay sigma for population or s for sample i just divide it by the mean by x bar i'll get something called cv not your personal cv in the curriculum vt no <laughs> it is the coefficient of variation so what is the benefit of having this coefficient of variation we have the standard deviation so we can find the deviation of the data from their mean how far or how big they are deviating if they are very close to the mean or they are very far from the mean or how they are from the mean so what is the benefit of having this coefficient of variation sometimes i have the standard deviation for one sample which measured in gram i have a sample of medicines or for drugs of something which has been measured in milligram okay and i have the standard deviation and some experiment done in uk and they have measured the same experiment but they have measured it in pounds so how can I compare that the standard deviation from here is different than the standard deviation there? So in order to compare data from two different sources or using different units, I have to use the standard deviation divided the mean x power. So I get something like a fraction. Okay, it will be only a fraction. It will be unitless. So I can compare the, the, the two data, whether they are measured in pound, whether they are measured in kilogram or gram or milligram, it doesn't matter for me. It will give me a fraction, unitless, unitless fraction. This is called the coefficient of variation. So coefficient of variation, we can use it to compare two standard division. I have standard division, but standard division has unit, gram, centimeter, millimeter, milligram, and so on. So I can use to compare two standard division of two sets of data if i don't know their units i it may mislead me give me wrong impression okay this one is 0 0.5 the other one is 1.2 but maybe this one in inch and the other one in millimeter so maybe it will mislead me to and give me a wrong impression or for uh, give me fallacious results okay okay wrong results okay it may mean to fallacious result 
it may also uh, it may be that two variables involved in the measurement are in different units okay for example i may wish to to check the certain population or the the serum of cholesterol level in one place it will be measured in 100 milliliter and in other place it will be measured in pounds so i'll compare apple to banana apple to camel apple to egg it's not apple to apple Every time when I have to compare, I have to make sure that I'm comparing apple to apple. The same unit should be for the standard deviation. To avoid this, we came to the coefficient of deviation. So how to avoid having different units, the error of having different units and in interpreting the data? We said, okay, we'll use the standard deviation dividing the mean. So the standard deviation in gram, the mean also will be in gram, so they will cancel each other and they'll be unitless. If it is in pound and the, the mean will be in pound, so they will cancel each other and they will, uh, will end up with unit less. Okay, so the CV, the coefficient of variation, coefficient of variation equal standard division, not the variation, not square, not S square, S only, S only, okay, S divided X bar, okay, X divided, divided X bar, okay, so express the standard deviation as a percentage of the mean it will give me fraction or percentage if i times by 100 it will give percentage okay percentage is unitless the coefficient of variation is independent on the scale if i use the scale of measurement if i measure in pound in gram milligram it is independent regardless of the unit the the, the coefficient of variation it will be unitless it is used to measure it is it is a useful statistics for comparing the variability of two or more variables measured in different scales. Okay, if one is measured in inch and the other one mentioned in millimeter, it doesn't matter for me because it will be unit less. Percentile or quartile, quartiles, okay, or an interquartile. Some of us already studied them in the high school, but here, just in order to understand, I have a sample of data. Okay, just I put them in the order. Here, that's the serial number. Serial number, item number one, item number two, item number three, item number four, and so on. Just the serial number to count how many are. So here I have 25 items, just counting, okay? This column, the first column, just how to count them, okay? Then here, I put my readings in order. Okay, Not, sorry, not uh, I put my reading in, in the list, okay? Not in the order, in the list, okay? So the first reading was one, the second was two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, again, two, three, four, five, some of them zeros, so whatever, okay? So how I can get this quartile or percentile? The first thing you remember when we have the example of the mean, we said that the mean will be the sum of the items divided the number of them. The median, we said, will put all of them in order. So for example, I have one, three, two, four, five and so on five and so on so i have to put them in order so i write them one two three four and five there are five numbers so this will be the median because there are five numbers i have two number before and the two number five it is five five plus one equals six divided two equals three so the third item will be my my median so this is the median the same concept of this median I have to put here also. So I arrange my data. This is actually my set of data, which is here. Just let me highlight them in green color, light green. So these are my, my data, set of data. The only thing I do, I put them in order. From the smallest to the ascending order, from the smallest to the biggest. Or the other way around, from the biggest to the smallest. Ascending or descending, it doesn't matter. Okay, so these are my data. I put them in order, starting from the smallest, 0 0.6, 0 1.2, 1 1.6, and so on. Then I have to count them. That's why I created this column to count them. There are 25 numbers. Okay. So they are 25 numbers. So 25 is odd number. So which number will be the median? I have to add 1 plus 1 because I cannot divide 25 by 2. It will give me fraction. It will 25 plus 1 equal 26. Divided 2 equals 13. So item number 13 this is called my median. The normal median. Okay. This is my normal median. So this would be my median. I just highlighted. it. How many items before it? 12. See? From 1 to 12. How many items after it? 12. 
Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I have 12 before and 12. So this is the median. Then I come to the 12 before it and I find the median of the above 12. There are 12. How can I get even number? So how can I get the median? The median of the 12 divided 2 equals 6. So it will be 6 and 7. Because it is even number, it will have two items will be the median. Item number 6 and item number 7. So item number 6 and number 7. Okay, this will be my median. So what is the median value? It will be the reading. This is the reading. This These two th columns are nothing. Okay, just to have the, the sequence and the, the, the numbering. Okay, these are nothing. This is the, my reading. Okay, these are the serial number. Okay. So my median will be 2.1 plus 2.3, 2.1 plus 2.3 divided 2. They will equal 4.4 divided 2 equals 2.2. .2. So my, my median here will be 2.2. .2. So this is the half called the median. Okay, this will call the first quartile. So here I have first quarter, second quarter third quarter and the fourth quarter okay so i have my data here I split them into my data I split them into half it's called the median the first half then i get half of the half okay which is here so this is called the first quarter or first quartile this first quartile this is the median second quartile so this is the third quartile and this is the fourth quartile i'm not calling it for so here i call this one the minimum value and this one the maximum value so i have first quartile second quartile and third quartile okay the difference between the first and the third quartile they call it interquartile interquartile okay so interquartile okay equals q3 minus q1 the value of q3 minus the value of q1 so now i understood how to get the median okay 25 plus 1 equals 26 divided 2 equals 13 so item number 13 will be the median then i get the first half here there are 12 number 12 uh, 12 divided 2 equals 6 so i be item number 6 and the next one which is 7 item 6 and 7 so these are the the the, the new median of the small sample which we call the first quartile so the first quartile would be the sum of these two plus divided two. So 2.1 plus 2.3 equal 4.4 divided two equal 2.2. .2. The same thing I have to do for the last half. So here, the first half above the median and the second half under the median. Also this one I have to split into two. So there are 12 numbers divided two equal six. So it will be six and seven. I count after the median one, two, three, four, five. So it will be number six and number seven. If I want to make sure that I'm right, I have to count the number under it or under before 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And before it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 5 numbers before and 5 uh, number under. So here the interquartile will be 4.2 plus 4.5 equal 8.7 divided 2 equal 4.35. So this is called the third quartile. Okay, so this is first, first quartile and this third quartile. And the median itself, it will be the second quartile. So coming back here, so I quartile of a sample, the value which is equal to a larger than I percent, okay, of observation. The first, second, and third quartile of the sample are the values which is 25%. So the first quartile, 25%. The second quartile, 50%. The third quartile will be 75% of the sample. So how to get them we said that we get the sample okay divide into two so this is the median or second quartile okay and divide the first half into two also so this will be the first quartile the last half will divide into two it will be third quartile okay this is the way and this number called minimum and this number called maximum if you want to write it vertically so this will be the minimum here this value which is 0 0.6 the minimum minimum and this value would be the maximum and this the third quartile would be the average of these two and this is the first quartile and this is the median which is the second quartile interquartile 
IQT or IQR, sometimes they call IQT or IQR equals the third quartile minus the first quartile. The third quartile minus the first quartile. This is called the interquartile, this area. Okay, the third minus equals Q3 minus Q1. The range of any data, the range of any data is the biggest number minus the smallest number, the maximum minus the minimum. This is the maximum 6.1 and the minimum 0 0.6. So the range will equal the maximum minus minimum 6.1 minus 0 0.6. So again, the second quartile, the median itself, okay? The first quartile is the half of the half, okay? The third quartile, the half of the bottom half, excluding the median. When we count, we have to exclude the median from them, okay? So if you find the first one, or the sample is, two, is odd number, so your median will be one number. But the other two median, Q1 and Q3, will be the average of two numbers, see? The average of two numbers. But if it was the other way around, so you'll end up here, we're having two, the median, and here one and one. Okay? So it depends on the case.